coal mine wasn't far now. Today, I would meet the kidnapper, and he would give me Alice. I wouldn't give him any other choice. A drowning man would clutch at a straw. Little by little, without realizing it, I'd come to believe that the story in the manuscript was coming true. The current of its narrative had taken me deeper and deeper into dark waters. Alice had been taken from me. Barry was probably in jail. I was a fugitive from the FBI. The whole world taken over by the dark presence was trying to destroy me. It all felt real, but it matched a textbook case of insanity. Oh, what? what? Something out of it looks weird. It's like some wild wasteland shit from Fallout. Just a uh, bridge. There's a little house over here. This is Pat Main, and you're listening to KBF-FM. Folks, I want to apologize for kind of abandoning you to that looping music track last night, but I was detained. You see, I encountered a big-shot G-man with an itchy trigger finger who could use a, a lesson in manners and a boot in the ass, not necessarily in that order either. Now, folks, I know I'm not being very informative here, and I apologize for that. I really should just keep quiet, but... I'm just so peeved right now, because some people just shouldn't be carrying badges. And I'm just glad that our Sheriff Breaker was there to straighten things out. And if someone I met last night is listening, let me just say, I'm sorry if my mouth got you in trouble. I'm pretty sure you're not the bad guy here. Godspeed, son. I hope you know what you're doing. Now, on a lighter note, I'll be talking to Dr. Nelson all morning. But first, a little music. A nice guy. What the? What the fuck? Climbing up into these fire towers Cause it's probably a little bit too low and stuff But it's a cool To me Welcome back to KBF FM Hope you enjoyed that tune Now Doc, you were talking about life And finding that special someone That soulmate Well, you were talking about that I was saying I don't buy it Well see, to me that's strange Because I always pegged you as a Hopeless romantic. <laughs> you got me there, Pat. But I think love's where you look for it. And you need to do a lot of looking, sure. 
But the idea that there's that one special person out there for you, and if you miss that chance, it's gone forever, and you're forever incomplete. I mean, isn't that depressing? Or, heck, childish even? There's plenty of fish in the sea. <laughs> and apparently a fisherman has a fishing analogy for everything, but what you're saying, isn't that a little harsh? Well, no. What I am saying is that your potential for finding that connection isn't limited to what's essentially a chance encounter. How is that harsh? Yeah, well, I guess that's a nice thought, but let me say something personal here. Okay. Now, well, I, I don't disagree with you exactly, but I can't really fit that together with what I feel, what I, what I felt for someone, because she was the one. She was. And she, I let her drift away from me. Maybe I didn't put in the work, I don't know, but, well, since then, and it, it was a long time ago, but, but since then, there hasn't been anyone, not like her. And I'm not saying I dwell on her or haven't moved on. I like my life. I, I'm not living in the past, but I do miss the way she completed me. You can't argue with the heart, Pat. Uh, I'm sorry, folks. I had kind of a scary experience last night, and let's just say it's shaken a few things loose. Or Pat. Every time I find a new car, I'm switching. What the hell? For Mott, spying on the writer on the ferry had been a disappointment. His boss had made Wake Out to be something special, but Mott hadn't been impressed. He'd gotten a good long look up the wife, though, and he liked what he saw. Mott had fantasized about goading Wake into a fight, but it hadn't happened. Still, he'd get his chance to see if the writer had anything in him. He'd been promised as much. early. I was supposed to meet the kidnapper at noon in the main building. The coal mine was quiet. It was a museum now. While lucrative at first, the mining steadily declined in the 20th century. The seams were rich, but hard to get at, and the volcanic activity in the area made the mine shafts particularly dangerous. With Nightingale gone and the night wind blowing in through the broken studio window, Maine stared at Sarah. The sheriff looked away. Maine's voice shook with barely controlled anger. That boy's doing more drinking than thinking. I hope you know what you're doing, Sarah. He's got a sickness in his eyes. You take my word for it. He wants Wake for a reason, and it's not for anything good. In 1970, a volcanic eruption around Cauldron Lake, while relatively minor, caused most of the deep mining tunnels to collapse or flood. 32 miners lost their lives in the calamity, and all mining around the Bright Falls came to a final stop. Now, many of the remaining buildings are protected as historical landmarks. I didn't want to go outside. Cops had to be looking for me. 
The noon sun turned the place into a sauna. The day dragged on. Different scenarios ran through my mind. Ways of how I'd torture the kidnapper to get Alice back, or the different horrible things he could have done to her. I imagined her dead. I had no way of knowing she was still alive. It was killing me. I was running on blind hope. It was all a waste of time. The bastard never showed up. jerked around you by you. You want to see your wife alive? Because if you do, you better watch what you say to me. Do we understand each other? I want to talk to Alice. Yeah, and I want the manuscript. Don't keep me waiting, Wake. Hello? Hello? Ah! I'm gonna kill him! I had to get to Mirror Peak. <laughs> oh. Maybe closer than ever before. Seventeen plus. More plus. Oh, shocking. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. I got so many shotgun. Eh? Oh, shit. Yeah. When Thomas Zane fell for Barbara Jagger, it happened fast. She was young, vibrant and beautiful, full of life. He had never been a very happy man, and without any seeming effort, she had changed all that. Zane felt good for the first time in his life. Everything she did was another piece of a jigsaw puzzle he hadn't even known he'd been missing. And best of all, she made the words flow, strong and sharp. She was his muse. Trying to reload after systems explode. How does brain not do for smart things sometimes? Shackasses. God, I am...
The only way to reach the hillside ahead was to go through the building. I had to find a way to avoid electrocution. Okay, okay, dodge out of the way. Y'all can't get me up here, bitches. Fuck you. Of course I'm gonna get a pick. I'm gonna get a pick. What did I just say? Oh no. I do not use batteries much. You really don't need to, because your fucking batteries regen. It's like they expect you to use more batteries than you really need to. They expect you to use a lot. Especially if you're playing on Nightmare, like... Chicken shit and run. Some of the taken retained echoes of their former selves, but these were just the nerve twitches of a dead thing. Nothing remained but a shell covered and filled with darkness. In most cases, these puppets were enough for the purposes of the dark presence. But for anything more elaborate, as with the writer, it was different. It needed his mind, and so rather than taking him over completely, it merely touched him. Like how?
There was no way the flashbang grenades were standard power company equipment. Maybe they are, Wake. You don't know? Are you a standard power company equipment? I don't know what that's supposed to mean. I love flashbangs. I stared through the bars of the jail cell. Barry stood behind me, swaying on his feet, looking as ill as I felt. Agent Nightingale stood on the other side of the bars with Sheriff Breaker. Nightingale had a stack of manuscript pages in his hand. He seemed unhinged as he gloated. Well, I've got you now, Raymond Chandler. It's all here. All the evidence, including conspiracy to murder a federal agent. Let's see. If he had said that when he first shot me, that would make more sense. But he didn't. And obviously, the sheriff's not even clued in on what's going on. More flashbangs. Making me waste one of my new flashbangs. A bunch of loot that I can't use. I had no real plan. I was going to give the kidnapper all the manuscript pages I had for Alice. If that wasn't enough, I'd hold him at gunpoint and make him talk. And I know what I'm going to hold him at gunpoint with. <laughs>
The dark presence was moving ahead of me in the same direction I was going. A cold feeling settled itself in the pit of my stomach. Was it going for Alice? Um... The graveyard shift may cause cancer. Fuck you, that was my joke! Is it actually supposed to be crosses? Cause they look like okay, I guess they are supposed to be crosses. But who makes crosses? That fucking big. Also, they're not in any order. These make no sense. This is something made this shit. Fuck. I lifted the page in front of my eyes and read it. In it, I lifted the page in front of my eyes and read it. In it, I lifted the page in front of my eyes and read it. In it, I lifted the page in front of my eyes and read it. In it, I lifted the page in front of my eyes and read it. In it, I lifted the page in front of my eyes and read it. What the fuck? <laughs> 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 Oh boy. The place was dead. A ghost town. Had been for decades, maybe a century. Hello! Things were never as simple in real life as in fiction. I had lost count of the times I had wished there'd be a clear reason for my writer's block. Something to fight. Something to lash out on. There wasn't. I was filled with doubt. I was nothing like the hero in my books. Alex Casey had gone through his life with single-minded determination, never wavering from his goal. Even now, I was angry at myself. Angry at Alice. Angry at Barry. I was fumbling and I had no plan. Great Peak Gorge, originally founded in 1928, the Great Peak Gorge mining town was one of the permanent settlements uh, the Bright Falls Mining Company had built for its workers. The nearby grave site is a testament to the dangers the miners face on a daily basis. Most of the men lost their lives over the years uh, here were buried there. A grim reminder to be careful for those who remain. Great Peak Gorge was abandoned almost overnight when Brent Falls Mining Company closed its doors in 1970. Fuck a dude gonna do. I'll hop into this house. I'm looking. God fucking damn it. Give me these batteries. I don't need them. I, uh, I get the I think it was some lot of Woo! I see you in there. Shaking that ass. 
Doc sat down heavily. He examined Barry and Rose. Barry was already recovering. Rose was another story. She was conscious, but she was barely present, almost delirious, disturbed, touched in the head, they used to say. It wasn't the first time Doc had seen someone in such a state, but it had been over 30 years. Doc poured himself a stiff drink. He hadn't forgotten a thing. Gotta go back to the future. Oh, bad, bad refrigerator. Fun. <clears throat> Here's train. Damn it. Oh, stop it. Run away. Run away. Bad choo choo train. Going through all these damn batteries then. Shame. Did I just. Yeah. Side of riding is a struggle. I feel ill. I managed to make my way downstairs. There's a shoebox filled with books and papers by Thomas Zane. It's very hard to focus, but I managed to read some of it. He's a poet, and a good one. He writes of muses and creators summoning fabulous things from a magic lake, using his powers to shape the world of a realm of gods and dreams and demons, dark things that wait for a chance to slip through, wearing the flesh of men as disguise. Zane writes about himself, his girlfriend being taken over by a dark presence, about growing scared of the lake. Zane believes it's a mirror to the gaping void of darkness above, where some Lovecraftian presence lurks. I crawl back upstairs. I'll borrow these things from my story. They ring true. They fit.
The kidnapper had sent me a text. The message was full of spelling errors and insults. It was telling me to hurry up. Birds. Without warning, the headache stabbed at my brain. Diving into the fucking lake. The hunters were big, thick-set men, confident and at home in the woods. They were feeling good, running on beer, ghost stories, and camaraderie late into the night. It did them no good, as they were taken by the dark presence, sucked deep into a darkness far worse than any ghost story they ever told or heard. Yeah, I bet they were sucked. Wait, what? Flares. I love flares. <laughs> Even behind the closed doors and curtains of his grimy room at the Majestic, the local motel, Nightingale could feel the locals' eyes on him, the unrelenting pressure of their judgment. He forced it out of his mind. For all he knew, they could all be under Wake's spell already. You do what you have to do to get the job done. He took comfort from the bottle in his hand. Please, he thought. 
Just let me get through this. Knew it. Want a fucking flare gun them, but I want to get more than just one or two of them. Oh my god, that's not gonna work. I'm gonna. This is what I get for trying to. Put the flare down. I am. I'm a writer. to make my way up this mine shaft in order to go on. Maybe the machinery could help me with that. Oh boy! Gotta make a big old bridge! Fun! I thought <laughs> I thought I was gonna fall through for a second. Powerful kick. Aye, my kicks make wood splinter. You cannot understand or comprehend the power of my kicks. Clap, 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 clap. Page from my manuscript. Lightning flash behind the windows of Cauldron Lake Lodge. Tor Anderson laughed and held the steel hammer above his head. Nurse Sinclair was trying to calm him down without success. Tor grinned madly and shouted, My hammer's up. Here's a friendly poke from Mjolnir, wench. He brought the hammer down with all his might on Sinclair's head. We're on a comeback tour, baby. <laughs> this is my pistol. 
I shoot my pistol. Mama always said you shouldn't jump down. No. The fucking birds come back if I didn't kill them. Fucking birds. Why did I not kill the birds? Oh, Lord. That's, uh, that's suspicious. It's not even making a lock sound. No, birds! Oh, shit! fell down there. Oh, motherfuckers! Oh, fuck. Yeah, yeah. Wait until that door didn't open. Hey, look, there's smoke coming out of this building. You really want me to take a hunting rifle, don't you? serious. Ah, uh, okay. More flares. Cauldron Lake. The eighth deepest lake in the world, Cauldron Lake, is a caldera lake formed in a volcanic crater. The volcano itself could be considered active, but it has not erupted since the volcanic earthquakes of 1970. And even then, the underground activity was comparably mild. Despite some property damage, there were no casualties. Cauldron Lake is one of the most beautiful spots in Bright Falls area, as well as a central figure in many local folk tales. It's a popular recreational area for the wild area resident. Hold up now. Hold up, 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 hold up. It says there was mild property damage and no casualties. 
But when the volcano erupted, they said there was 32 deaths at the mines, and the island disappeared. That uh, Thomas Zane and I can't remember her last name, Barbara, whatever. We're never seen again from that lake. So there's at least 34 fucking people that died. <laughs> this is obviously for tourists. This is, the, this is the tourist attraction sign that doesn't tell you the actual information. A bunch of bullshit. Don't you fucking dare. Trust it. Fucking knew it. You fuck out of my way. You fuck out of here. all this shit I could easily fight but why I don't need to kill everybody just most of everybody wait wait did I run backwards Fuck! Oh, I actually have more ammo for this. Can't tell. I went the opposite direction. I didn't even notice. I'm an idiot. How did I not notice? Because I'm, I'm coming from a different direction. I didn't see the sign. I'm an idiot. This looks completely different to the side that I ran to. Wait. Huh. That tree is floating. You are floating. Like, why use anything else? I've got so much flaring on him. Insane. Maud had checked all of Stucky's rental cabins. There had been no sign of the wakes. It was dark when he'd found their car parked at the end of the road by Cauldron Lake. It made no sense. They must have taken a wrong turn. But there was no sign of them, and the car had been there for hours already. Frustrated. Mott stood on the rotten ruin of the footbridge that had once led to Diver's Isle before it sank beneath the waves years ago. The boss wouldn't be happy. The boss wouldn't be happy. The boss, the boss, the boss. Fucking boss. CW and TZ. Cynthia Weaver. Ah! Cynthia Weaver and Tom Sane. Uh, I miss you, Tom. 
Tom, 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 I curse you, Thomas Zane. Tom, Tom. I miss you, Tom. Did you write this? Tom, you talk to me on TV, Tom. I, I know how the, like, the s story ends, but I don't remember like the interactions between all the people. Oh, so, like, I don't recall if I don't recall if that Barbara woman was even a person or if she was always a. I haven't hit anybody with that one. Ah! Okay. I still have a fucking flare left. <gasps> Why did I do that? I don't know. Book not. I could see Cauldron Lake. I thought I could make out the spot where the island and the cabin had been. There was a light near it. It had to be a boat. I was close now. I had to get there fast. I dreaded what I would find. I tried to hold on to Alice, but her form melted away. I was losing control. Dr. Hartman stood in her place. I wanted to hit him, but my arms were jelly. He smiled. It was a reassuring smile, and I hated him for it. I had to give you a sedative. Don't fight it. You went through another rough period. Right now, it's very important that you stay calm. We don't want you to have another episode. You're a patient at my clinic. Have been for a while now. Wait! Are you? Wait! Hey, I'm here! I'm coming!
my poor mama died I was cut from her belly with a Stanley knife My daddy did a jig with a drunk midwife But who's that yonder hole in flames Dragging behind him a sack of chains Who's that yonder hole in flames Well, up jumped the devil and he staked his claim on me Yonder laughing at me Like I was the parental 